Okay everybody, welcome back for the third episode of the race car build. Today we're going to cover some wiring um, again, but not very much of it because, well, wiring is kind of boring. This particular video is going to cover how to switch two relays at the same time. So for example, on this particular car, uh, using the Mega Squirt, there, when you activate the low side limiter on the brake pedal, and you want to switch to the trans brake limiter, which are typically two different RPMs in a turbo car. You don't want them both active at the same time, so what you do is you use two of your relays that are both activated independently, but they're tied to each other so they can't be on at the same time. So I'm going to go over the wiring, I'm going to show you a demo of what it actually does, and then in a few minutes I will show you a diagram on a whiteboard on what the wiring looks like. And this can be adapted to a nitrous system with no timer, a nitrous system with a timer, or anything that you want to automatically switch with a trans brake input or any kind of input for that matter. So sit tight, we're gonna show you how it works, and then I'll show you the diagram. Okay, most of the wiring is already inside the car, including the wiring that goes to the trans brake and, and some few things like that. And the only thing left to finish inside the car is the actual installation of the button, uh, putting the dash in place and all that, but for, like I said, for the most part, all the wiring is there. This is just some test wiring to show you how everything works. This particular switch is actually gonna simulate the trans brake, and this wire simulates the brake pedal input. So if you notice, when I touch this wire to the power strip, this light comes on. This light simulates the brake pedal. This light simulates the trans brake solenoid coming on. So what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna walk you through what a typical pass would look like. So as I'm, the car is idling and I'm, my crew guy is pulling me up to the line and I'm gonna stop six inches away or so from the first light. I'm gonna pump the brakes up and I'm gonna put the gas pedal on the floor while I hold the brakes with a, a fair amount of effort. The first RPM limit is set somewhere around 4,500 RPMs. So now I'm on the brake pedal and the RPM limiter is active and I got the gas pedal on the floor. Now I'm gonna ease up on the brakes just a small amount and I'm gonna roll forward the next six inches and I'm gonna activate the stage bulb. At that time I hit the trans brake and the first light goes out and the second light comes on which is the first limiter going off and the second limiter coming on. Now if you'll notice, they still work independently and you can use them any way you need to, but this particular way, the way these two relays are wired, allows you to do that. Now if you have a car that uses like a, an MSD 7531 box or an MSD 7535, if these two wires are active at the same time, it's no problem, you have a third limiter. That third limiter is um, a boost limiting RPM or, or something like that. So if somebody were to be burning you down on the tree, you can actually rest your foot on the brake pedal and make a third limiter come on, which effectively brings the RPM come down. If you don't want the RPM to come down in your MSD software, all you have to do is set the RPM limit the same as your launch RPM limit when you're active on the button. Okay, now that we've covered that, I'm, I'm gonna go over it real quick one more time. I'm gonna stage the car, or I'm sorry, I'm going to pre-stage the car. The brake limiter comes on. I ease up a small amount on the brake pedal and roll forward six inches. I hit the trans brake and the, the trans brake limit becomes active. Okay, now we can switch over to the diagram on the whiteboard and I can show you exactly how it works. Okay, this is the diagram that I showed earlier with the light demonstration. When the trans brake solenoid is not active, 87A is sitting with 12 volts on that post. That wire is the one that powers 87 on the brake pedal. Whatever device you have connected on 30 is going to get the 12 volts through there. When you hit the trans brake, 87A goes dead, this relay shuts off, and whatever device is connected to that relay becomes active. Now in the case on this car, I need these two to be ground. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a third relay and change a couple of these wires around. So, just like that, we changed it. Now we're going to switch these devices, in this case limiters, by a ground instead of a 12 volt. So 
I'm going to go over the stage in the car just like we did earlier showing the lights. As the car comes into the beam, the brake pedal is sending 12 volts to this relay. As this relay is closed, it sends a ground to the low side limiter because it is hooked up to 87A of the other relay, the third relay. That relay is grounded through 87. When you hit the trans brake, this relay becomes active, turning the trans brake on, turning this relay on, turning 87A off, and grounding this wire. This wire is the high side limiter, so it's gonna go from 4,500 over here to 5,000 RPM as the car, so the car can leave the line. Years ago when I discovered this, it made things a whole lot easier because then I, was, I had a nitrous car and you could never seem to do the same thing twice when the car launched uh, because the, the nitrous activation was sporadic. It was never the same. So this way, it allows us to let go of the trans brake and the nitrous comes on. Just as a bonus, here is uh, a diagram on how to do the same thing with a nitrous car. Post 86 is your 12 volts from your trans brake button, 85 is the ground, 30 goes to the trans brake solenoid, 87 is the 12 volt input with a fuse. Remember 87A is live when the relay is open. So it's sending 12 volts out. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire 87A into the micro switch, which is on your carburetor, your throttle linkage, or, or whatever. When that micro switch is closed, it's sending 12 volts to 86. 85 is grounded. That relay turns on. It has fused input on fused 12 volt input on 87, and then post 30 sends the power out to the nitrous. Don't forget to put the retard wire on there so the timing is retarded when the nitrous is activated. So when the car pulls up to the line, there's no stalling it up, there's no building boost or anything like that. The nitrous guys pull up, they hit the trans brake, they deck the gas, the micro switch closes, trans brake comes on, you let go of the trans brake, 87A picks the power up, sends it through the micro switch, turns this relay on, and the nitrous comes on. The end. Okay, thanks everybody for stopping by and checking out volume three of the race car build and covering some of the wiring that's done inside the car. Again, I wasn't gonna cover everything in the car because it's really boring as far as running wires and zip ties and all that. Um, when the time comes and the wire is tied up and, and we get to the configuration of the race pack and the Mega Sport, then uh, there's gonna be another video covering that, uh, hopefully which will be this coming weekend or the next video, I should say. Following that is going to be dyno time. So, again, thanks for stopping by. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, do it your way in the garage.